Growing up, I learned a lot of different stories. Some of them are um, what you'd consider legends, and some of them are what I consider to be the history of our tribe. Because we have stories about the Seminole Wars, which are history, but then I tell stories about animals, and those are sometimes considered to be legends. So this story starts out with a mama possum, and mama possum's out trying to get food. She's out in the woods, and she's uh, foraging around trying to find berries and nuts and things to eat and feed her kids and she has all of her babies with her and all the babies are pulling on her hair and pulling her all over the place and some of them are trying to wander off and so she's trying to figure out how am I going to collect food and keep track of all my kids and keep them safe so she's looking around and she's looking around and she spies this tree this big pine tree and it's got a little hole in it in the side of it so she looks up at that tree and she goes over there and she climbs up and looks in and it's just an empty hole. So she says, I will put my kids in here. I'll put my babies in here. And so that's what she does. She gets one at a time, sticks them in that hole. She gets some Spanish moss and she covers that hole and she thinks, okay, they're gonna be safe for a little bit. I'm gonna go gather food so I can feed them, feed myself. And so that's what she does. She climbs back down, she wanders around, she collects all kinds of berries and nuts and stuff to feed her kids. And then she starts heading back towards that tree. When she gets close to that tree, she doesn't see the tree yet, but she hears something singing. There's some animals singing a song. And they're, in this song, I know both versions, both, and I'll tell you this also, and within our tribe, we have three languages. And people are like, three languages? How do you have three languages? One language belongs to the ancient people of Florida. One language belongs to the Creeks. One language belongs to Miccosukee. All of us together are what we make up as Seminole tribe today. And people say, well, Calusa, the ancient people, they were all killed off by the Spaniards, died of all that kind of stuff. And I, was, I always tell them, no, some of them intermarried with us. Some of them had kids with us. So their stories or songs all still continue with us. Hardly anybody uses that, that language. I would say maybe a dozen people know any portion of that language. The other two languages, we have multiple speakers in, in both of those languages. So what I'm going to do for you now is sing that same song in both Creek or Muscogee language, and then I will sing it to you in the Miccosukee language. So in the Creek language, or Muscogee language, if you're talking to somebody who deals in languages, um, the, the song goes like this. In the bar, we are Chejon, Chejon, we are Wallon, Wallon. In the bar, we are Chejon, Chejon, we are we are And in the Mikasuki version, it's Han up a whaley, Han up a whaley, Chejon, 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 Chejon. Han up a whaley, Han up a whaley, Wallon, 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 Wallon. And what those um, bull bats are singing, and that's who's singing this song, the bull bats. Um, they're, they have that mama possum's babies and they're throwing them in the air. They're standing on the edge of that hole and throwing her babies in the air and they're singing that song and they're saying, we've got your babies, we're playing with your babies and they're just throwing them in the air and catching them and throwing them in the air. And so the mama possum, she starts to cry and she drops all that food she's gathered and she starts to panic and she starts walking around aimlessly and as she's walking around, she bumps into an alligator who's laying there on the river, uh, the river bank, and he's trying to get some sun. And he really, whoop, she woke him up, and he looks, and he looks at the uh, baby possum, and she's crying, and she's got tears rolling down her face. And he looks at her, he says, "No, no more. What's wrong? Why are you crying?" And she looks at him, and she tells him what happened. She was hungry, trying to get food, and her babies, and she put them in the tree. And when she got food, she came back. The bull bats were playing with her babies, and she doesn't know how she's going to get her babies back. And the alligator looks at her and says, show me where this tree is at. He says, I got all this armor, and I got this tail. I'll go over there, I'll knock that tree down with my tail, and we'll get your babies back. She says, oh, thank you. I'd appreciate that. And so he says, show me where it's at. Lead the way. So she starts walking back towards that tree. And as they get close, they don't see the tree yet, but you can hear those bull bats singing. In la ba way you lay, chejon, chejon, way you lay, wallon, wallon. And she turns around to tell the alligator, that's the tree. And all she sees is the tail, the tip of the tail as he's running away. And she's like, oh my gosh, the alligator's scared of the bats. Oh, and so she starts crying again and she's wandering around aimlessly again and she's just crying all over the place. And this, this time, she bumps into a big black bear, 
And this black bear sitting up against a tree that he just ripped open, and he's got honey all over his face and his claws, and he's sitting there with his big belly, and he's, he's like, oh. And he sees this little, this possum bump into him, and he says, no, no more. What's wrong with you? And she looks up, and it's a bear, and she's like, my babies are with the bull bats. The bull bats are playing with them, and they're going to eat them. I don't know what I'm going to do. I tried to hide him in a tree, and the alligator said he was going to help me, and then he ran off, and I don't know what I'm going to do. And the bear gets up, and he stretches. He's like, mm, show me where this tree's at. I'll go up there, and I'll rip that tree open and just grab your babies and take them back. There's no problem. So Mama Possum's like, oh, okay, thank goodness. And so she leads them to that tree, and they get close, and what happens? Those bull bats start singing. They can see them. And there's, in the bar, we lay, chajon, chajon, we lay, voila, voila. And she turns around to point, that's the tree bear. And what happens? The bear's running off. Oh, she starts crying again, not knowing what to do. She's, her heart's falling down. She's like, oh, no, I don't know what I'm going to do. The alligator ran off, bear ran off. And she's crying and walking around, walking around. And this time she bumps into a box turtle and she hits that turtle and the turtle rolls a couple of times and he puts his feet out and he stops and he looks around, he turns around and he finally sees the mama possum there just crying a river. And he looks there and he says, what's wrong, mama possum? Why are you crying? What's causing you so much pain? And she looks at the box turtle and she tells him the story about the tree, her babies, hiding them in there with the Spanish moss, getting food, coming back. Then the bull bats having them and singing that song and taunting her and then bringing the alligator back and him running off and the bear coming and the bear running off. And the turtle listens to this whole story. He says, show me where this tree's at. And she looks at the box turtle and she's like, wait, what are you going to do? You're a little turtle. You know, the, the, the alligator, he got scared right now. The bear got scared right now. You're a box turtle. What are you going to do? No, I don't mean to be a, offend you, box turtle, but what are you going to do? You can't fly. You can't fly up there and get my baby, you know? And box turtle looks there and says, I'm old, as you know, and I'm pretty wise, and I have a lot of knowledge. Show me where this tree is at, and hopefully on the way there, I'll think of a good idea that we can do to get your babies back. And she says, I don't know. He's like, what do you have to lose? And so she thought about it, and she's like, I have to lose my babies. So, yeah, I'm going to take any help I can get. So she leads the box turtle towards that tree, and they get close, and you can hear those bull bats singing. Or, han up a whaley, han up a whaley, cheshon, 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 cheshon. Han up a whaley, han up a whaley, wallon, wallon. And so she gets close, and she turns around real slow this time, because it's a turtle. And she turns around, and he's still there. He's right behind her. He's walking his slow walk. And then all of a sudden, he says, stop. And so she stops, and then she's like, what? He's like, see that pile of sticks over there where all those trees fell over in the hurricane? That heart of pine over there. Go over there and get one of those sticks, and when you pick it up, hit it on the ground. Make sure it's nice and hard and bring it to me. She's like, a stick? You're going to use a stick. He's like, just go get the stick. I have an idea. When you come back, I'll tell you. So she goes over there, and she's rummaging through that pile, and she finally finds a nice stick, and she's beating it on the ground. It's nice and hard. And she brings it back, and she gives it to the box turtle. And box turtle said, here's my plan. I'm going to walk real quiet around the back of that pine tree. And when I get around the back, I'm going to get up on my hind legs, and I'm going to get that stick, and I'm going to start beating it on the tree. When I beat on that tree, those bull bats are going to fly out because they're going to be scared. And then you can climb up and get your babies. And she just looked at him. She says, are you sure? She goes, because um, those bull bats didn't seem to be afraid of the alligator or the bear when they saw them coming down the trail with me. Why would they be afraid of a turtle with a stick? He said, because they're not going to know what I am. And like most creatures, most creatures are afraid of the unknown. So they know what an alligator sounds, sounds like and looks like and how it acts. And they know the same thing about bear. They don't know what a turtle with a stick sounds like or looks like. It's going to scare them. She's like, I don't know. He's like, when I go around back and hit that tree, you'll see the bull bats fly out. Go up and get your babies. She just looks at him. Okay, it's your idea. I've tried the other, the bat, and, or I've tried the bear and the alligator. That didn't work. So, okay. So the 
box turtle took that stick and he went around the back of the tree and he got up there and he balanced himself and puts himself on the tree and he starts banging on that tree, just banging it with everything he's got. And sure enough, those bull bats flew out of that hole and they're flying away as fast as they can. And that mama possum, she's down there and she's just looking and the box turtle's like, go get your babies, quit standing there. And so she, she comes to, she's like, okay. And uh, so she goes over to that tree and she climbs up there and the box turtle comes around the front. And he's watching her and he's watching her try to grab her babies and bring them down. And she doesn't want to get them one at a time because what if those bull bats come back? So she's trying to get all of them. So she's putting them on her back and one's hanging off her ear and one's hanging off the bottom of her chin and a couple on her stomach pulling on her. And they, she's trying to come down the tree without falling off the tree. And she finally gets down to the ground and the box turtle says, is that how you always travel with your babies? And she's like, yeah, what am I supposed to do? And he said, you know what? I have another idea. He said, when I was born, I was in an egg. He goes, and I was inside that egg, and the breath maker, the God, the creator, whatever which term you wish to use, said he gave me a little piece of flint, a special piece of flint he had attached to my nose, and I used that to break that shell. He goes, I still have that. And the breath maker told me that it, it cuts without feeling. He goes, what I think I could do, I can cut right below your belly button, and then you can make a pouch out of it. And she's like, uh, yeah, you're not cutting me. It's not happening. Just not happening. He's like, well, you know what? Your babies look thirsty. You need to get that sap off your stomach from climbing down to that tree. Let's all go down to the water. And you can clean yourself off. Your babies can get water. Everything will be good. She's like, OK, that sounds good. So she gathers all her babies again, and she's herding them down to the water. And they're all in the water, drinking the water. And she's in there washing off and trying to get the sap off. And she comes out. and. Box turtle standing. He's like, wait a minute. Come here. You've got a little bit of sap left on there. Let me get that off. So she walks over there, and when she gets close enough, he gets that flint, and he just cuts her right there across, right underneath her belly. And her eyes get huge. And then she realizes, hey, I didn't feel anything. And he says, okay, now take your hands and put them in there. Start kneading a pocket out of there. Make a pouch. Make a pouch. And so that's what she does. She sticks her hands in there and starts making it bigger and bigger and bigger. And he says, okay, now get your babies and put them in that pouch. So she gets them one at a time, puts them in that pouch, puts them in the pouch, and then they're all sticking their little heads out of the top of the pouch, looking around. And he goes, okay, walk around now, climb a tree or something. So she walks around and she starts running. And as she climbs a tree, she goes up and comes around and goes down. And that's how Mama Possum got her pouch. <laughs>